everyone. Welcome to Marcy Creates. This is Marcy and welcome to our first color theory class for jewelry making. Uh, today I have a few announcements to make and we're going to go over this gorgeous vision in front of us as far as color theory. This is going to be a multi-part over the next several maybe month possibly topic because it is a big topic and I want to give it to you in bite-sized pieces. I don't want you to be overwhelmed with information and it is a lot. But before we get started on this, I wanted to give a shout out to the beautiful folks in Tennessee, Gatlinburg, in fact, um, Acclaim Crafts. They made this beautiful beadboard. I ordered it on Etsy. I will put the details for their shop in my description. Um, they are stunning boards. This is the second board I've purchased and I purchased it so we could specifically do the color wheel. It's perfect for that. But I wanted you to see my other board, which is right here. Uh, these are very deep wells. It's very thick. They've got little, little feet on the bottom that you can put so it doesn't slide around. This is a nice, uh, sturdy board. You're not going to drop this board. It's not going to warp like, you know, some of those plastic ones with the flocking. You've got plenty of channels to put things and they've etched beautiful little designs in it. You've got markers so you know how big your items are and they have a ton of different kinds of boards. So do check them out. They are really lovely. Um, one of the things I love is to, of course, support small businesses. They send you a lovely thank you card, which I'm a fan of Art Nouveau, so that stuck out to me right away. Beautiful card. Um, and it's John and Lori Walker in Gatlinburg. So check them out. I will put them on my Etsy. I mean, uh, descriptions for their Etsy shop. And so this board came from them. And it is perfect for showing you what I wanted to show you, which is the color wheel. The other thing I wanted to mention is if you don't have a color wheel, I highly suggest purchasing one. They're not expensive. This particular one I bought on Amazon. The company is called the Color Wheel Company, and I will put their website on my descriptions also. But you want one that's going to teach you about the relationships. This is two-sided. Okay. We're going to go over side one today because like I said, it's a lot of information and I want to give it to you in bite-sized pieces. A lot of people get intimidated with a color wheel like this. It's not as complicated as it looks. In fact, um, everything you need to know is really uh, one of the reasons I like this one is it explains everything so well. So we're going to go over side one today and to illustrate, I literally went in through my stash and one of the reasons I love this beadboard, it had just enough channels to do the color wheel. Um, and I believe Lori mentioned to me in her note to me that she uses this also as a color wheel. So there you go. Um, and this is very helpful. Now, if you don't have a board like this, still get yourself um, a color wheel with the, you know, I suggest this one, but if you can find one, what you're looking for is one that's going to tell you about primary colors, warm versus cool, hue, intensity, value, and then also back here is about color relationships. See how that spins around? And so those are what we're going to be using. Of course, watch this class if you don't want to, you don't want to purchase one, you don't have to, because I'm hoping to give you this information as we go through all of this. So I know it looks complicated, but also doesn't it look really pretty? It's very, very fun. And I may have to take my phone off my stand for you to see everything. Um, or actually, let me pull this up. So before we get started on the color wheel, let me push this up a little. Just down here, uh, I have, you've ever heard, uh, you know, the rainbow, this is the rainbow down here. If you've ever heard the acronym Roy G. Biv. That is the rainbow. So the rainbow, Roy, is red, orange, yellow. G is green. 
Biv is blue, indigo, and violet. Roy G. Biv. It's a very easy way to remember your rainbow. So if you ever wanna make a design using rainbow, think Roy G. Biv, okay? And I basically just went through here and pulled some beads into this. Now a little bit complicated, this says violet over here, but it all, you can use indigo as well as the, I'm sorry, blue violet is indigo. Violet is purple, what we call purple. So when I pulled these beads, I picked red, I picked orange, I picked yellow, I picked green. Then I went over here to blue. The blue violet became my indigo and then violet. So there you go, there's your rainbow. So that's, that's step one. Now I'm gonna move these because as I'm talking, I'm gonna knock them over, but I wanted you to see the rainbow uh, because that is another fun design technique. And of course, I believe this month is Pride Month, as they say, and rainbows are featured very heavily right now this month. And so you see rainbows everywhere. We all love rainbows. And I think it is just a fun way to design um, using every color, basically. You know, I don't know about you, but when I had my Crayolas, I wanted every color in the box and I wanted to use every color in the box. So whether or not this has any significance to you other than art, fantastic. But this is what you can do to begin with, with color, if you just want to make a fun design. And I've seen all kinds of designs and we will do a rainbow uh, project in our color wheel class. So let me move these because I don't want to knock them over because I will. <laughs> so um, now if you don't have this color wheel, like I said, what you can do, you know, get your little trays or your dishes. I think I got these at the dollar store and you can um, just make little pots of your beads, okay? And just make them in this order. Or if you have one of those trays with the flocked uh, flocking, um, you can just put them in the wells if you want, uh, or make them in little piles. Uh, this is fun to do with seed beads as well, but um, you don't have to have a fancy beadboard. But this beadboard was so perfect for this, I, I had to splurge. I figure if I'm gonna be teaching a lot of folks then I need to, um, needed to invest so that I could illustrate this really well for you. So let me move these. Well, actually, we'll just put them back where they were. So our orange right here. Um, I pardon for, for the ceiling fan, but it is like 106 today. I think I saw somewhere that it feels like 111. Good old Texas. It seems early to me, June. <laughs> I guess June's not too early. Usually we, it's July and August that feel like this, but um, I guess we're getting it early. Maybe we'll get done with it early. Here's my hope. This is the part of year where I leave really early in the morning <laughs> and then I don't go out the rest of the day. It's just too, it's just so hot. So here's our color wheel. Like I said, um, and we're gonna be talking about these colors. Oops, there's a, I don't know where that came from. So we're gonna first talk about how these are laid out. So what I wanna do today is talk about this first side. We're gonna talk about color relationships in the next video because I just, I really wanna make sure everybody understands how to use this. Um, Cause I know it looks intimidating. It's not, but if you've never, if you've never had anybody walk you through, it can seem a little daunting. So we're just gonna talk about right now, again, this moves, but we're not gonna talk about this inside part yet. So don't worry about any of these windows. I just want you to see the outside colors Okay, and they are lined up, whoops. 
They are lined up with their corresponding colors and beads. Then the outsides, I have neutrals. I have silvers and whites and um, creams. I've got black. We've got some gold down here and some tans and browns. And these are kind of your neutrals. Think of them as your neutrals in jewelry making. And then we have our actual colors, red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, or indigo, violet, red, violet. So that's the outside of this color wheel. You can see that each one corresponds to these colors. And I tried to pull out things out of my stash that matched really well. So you could see um, the very, there's some of them are very subtle differences, but you'll see in a minute how that all plays out. So if you remember back from school, there's something called the primary colors. So the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So we've got red here, yellow here, and blue here. Those three colors, the reason they're called primary colors is because you cannot make these by mixing other colors. These are the colors, but these are the colors that you can use to make other colors. So these you have to have, if you've ever taken a painting class, they will tell you all you need is red, blue, and yellow to make every color. And then you can use black and white to change the tone and the tint, which we'll talk about later. So red, yellow, blue, those are your primary colors. Uh, if you mix, no, and then we're gonna talk about secondary colors. So if you mix your primary colors together, two of them, you get what are called secondary colors. So red plus yellow equals orange. Okay, and how you can do that on the color wheel, I'm gonna show you. So now we're gonna talk about the inside a minute. So this inside flap shows you what color you'd get in this window if you add red, what color you get in this window if you add yellow, and what color you get in this window if you add blue. Then you come over here and it's got what happens if you add white and what happens if you add black. So we're gonna take our red and you just spin this around. So red plus red equals red. So you're not gonna mix red and red, you already have red. So let's say you're gonna mix the red and the yellow, like I said, this is what creates your orange. Okay, so there's your orange and there's your orange. So this wheel shows you red plus yellow equals orange. So what happens if we add blue? So if we add blue to red, you get violet. Okay. Now let's say you add white to red. Okay, now you've got pink. So when you think of your pastel colors, that is your color plus white. Then if you add, if you spin this around and you add black to it, now you've got kind of a brick, a brick red, which I pulled this elephant out because I thought he was the perfect illustration of that brick red. He's kind of, he's red with some black in it. Okay, and here's your pink. Let's move that one back forgot to show you that one. So here's your pink. Okay, pastel color. So every one of these colors on the outside of this wheel, you can spin this around to see. So like, let's do yellow. So if you, you wanna start with your outside color, if you use yellow plus red, you get orange. So let's slide this back over here. So yellow plus red, this one and this one equals orange. If we slide this over, we don't want to add yellow to yellow. It's just yellow. 
But then if we want to add blue, we're making our, working on our secondary colors again. Remember, secondary are created by mixing the primary colors. So yellow plus blue equals green. Okay? Secondary colors. So you're going to start with red, blue, and yellow. And then you can make orange, green, and purple. Those are your secondary colors. And you can make those by mixing equal parts, red and yellow, red and blue, blue and yellow. And the corresponding secondary color on your color wheel will always be in the middle of those. So when they were talking about tertiary colors, here was, here's where people get confused. So tertiary colors are those colors that are in between the secondary and the primary. So on this wheel, like I said, you've got red, orange, primary color, red and or red and yellow made orange. Okay. But there's many shades of orange. So if you have more red in something, it's going to be a red orange. And if you have more yellow, then you have a yellow orange. So these are all related to each other. And, and also by mixing different amounts, and this is more like painting than beads, but it still applies. All of these go together. I mean, I'm, I don't think any color doesn't go with any color, but when you understand the relationship of how they're made, then you can design jewelry so that, you know, it makes sense for you. And so if you have more yellow mixed with the red, then, so let's say in the case of a piece of jewelry, you're gonna have more beads that are yellow. Let's say you have one more bead that's red. So you would have a yellow orange type bead. But see how nicely those go together? So this is how you can start to think about putting colors together in your jewelry. So that's this side, okay? And if you mix red and blue, right, you get violet. Those, those two primaries make your secondary color violet. But if you have more red, you're gonna come up with more of a fuchsia color, okay? And if you have more blue, you're going to have more of a blue-violet or cornflower blue kind of color. Now, just for fun, because I have different colors, uh, let's move, let's say we want to look at our blue-violet, but we want to know what it's going to look like if we add white. So remember, white is our pastel, so we're going to slide this inside piece around, and we're going to add white to that blue-violet, and look at that pretty and I have a couple of beads, I think, close to that color. It's close. So you can see that there's different shades in here. This one's, if you add black, look how much darker that is. So that's why I like the fact that this spins around. The main things to remember here are how these colors are made, where they are on the color wheel, in relation to each other. This from here, your red violet, all the way to your yellow, pretty much split in half, okay? These are warm colors, the warm family, yellow to red violet. From yellow green to violet is your cool colors. So when you're talking about temperature, you've got warm and cool colors. So a lot of times when you're making jewelry, if you, depending on how you want to make your piece look to the eye, you may want to pick all warm colors 
uh, like fall is a very warm palette, right? You've got all these beautiful reds and uh, yellows and oranges for the leaves. And in the winter, you think a lot more about like blue, ice blue and silver, um, the cooler colors on this side, greens, deep greens. And so temperature is also something to think about. Uh, the other thing to think about, and all of this, by the way, the reason I'm, again, like I like this color wheel is it, it has it all here for you. Your primary, your secondary, your tertiary, your warm and your cool. And then over here, this is hue, value, intensity, tint, tone, shade, and neutral gray. And I know that sounds very complicated, but it's really not. So um, the color is just the actual color, right? Just the name of the color, that's it. The hue is the name of the particular color. So color is described by hue, value, and intensity. Hue is the actual name of the color, I'm sorry. So value is gonna be how light or dark it is. And that's where you refer to this. Like if you had a, if you remember back in the day, black and white TVs, that's how these colors show up on the grayscale, which is why they can colorize uh, all those old movies and things because um, these shades of gray, they've figured out how to correspond them to colors, which I find very fascinating. Um, and then tint is your color plus white, like we talked about with the pastels, that's a tint. And then a tone is the color plus gray. So you're gonna have a muted version. So um, it's not gonna be as deep as black, but it will deepen the color slightly depending on how much gray you put. Um, shade is the color plus black, as we talked about. And neutral gray is a balance between the white and the black. So let's talk about neutrals for a minute. So when I was talking about neutrals, so the white and the black are on uh, opposite ends, right? And then you've got lots of gray in between. Okay. So Neutrals are nice to use in your jewelry designs to kind of give the eye a rest when you're making jewelry. So we know we know that black and orange is cool. It's a little less, it's very intense, right? But it's less intense when you put it with gray. And it's very gentle or much gentler when you put it with white or clear. So that's why dynamic color schemes like, you know, for Halloween, for instance, they really shout out at you because even though there's a neutral with that, that's a very, on the grayscale, you've got a big difference. Whereas this is a little less. These are more, I would say, if, if this were in a black and white TV, the orange would look more gray. There's an obvious big difference between that and the black. So that's how you think about that. And um, so I encourage you to play with this. It's not as complicated. Just remember that when you're moving this around, you, this is your starting color always on the outside. And then, you know, adding red, yellow, or blue to something will change the color as far as whether it's a secondary or a tertiary color. And then if you add white, that's your tint. And then if you add black, that's your shade. And then wherever it is on the value, um, the color plus gray is your tone. So that is the color wheel basic, basics. And I don't want to get too far into this. We're gonna talk about the relationships next, which is the other side of this color wheel. But you can already think about color combinations that you like. And now you can see the relationship, 
you know, say you love, for instance, the warmer colors, you know, you love fall. Here's all your warm colors right here. So if you wanted to make a piece of jewelry with warm fall colors, you would look on this side of the color wheel. If you're wanting to do the ocean, you're gonna be looking maybe on this side in the blues and the violets and the greens. And then maybe you wanna add some interest or some neutrals, you can add blacks, you can add whites, browns. Well, that's, that's also a neutral. And remember I said that um, metals are a color. So I think about silver and white kind of together and uh, black is more like a hematite metal. You got your gold down here, okay? And then bronze and copper would more more like be in your browns. Well, some coppers could actually be considered a red, but um, mostly I think of it in, in terms of browns, brass, and then uh, pewter also in the silvers. Uh, nickel, which I don't recommend for jewelry because it's a lot of people are allergic to it, but um, bone colors and pearls, these are all what I consider to be neutrals. And they're gonna go with anything on here. Any, like I said, anything goes with anything, but um, you just wanna understand like where, where things are in the color wheel because then when you start deciding a color palette for yourself, then you know where to go on the color wheel. And do try a rainbow uh, design. We'll do a rainbow design. This is the board I wanna show you again. Um, it's just gorgeous. And do pull your things out of your stash, whatever you have, and see if you can make yourself a little color wheel here. Again, this is by the Color Wheel Company, and I really like it. And I will link, I will link it uh, from Amazon um, in my descriptions, and also where to get this. I believe this was forty four dollars the um, bead board, but you know, let's face it, I've been through those flocked bead boards. They break, they crack, they get stained. Uh, this is laminated and it's it's not going anywhere. You, once you buy this, you're gonna have it for a lifetime. But that's up to you. I know everybody has a different budget and I'm certainly not, um, I, I now understand budgets, trust me. So um, if you can purchase this, I would, or something like it. Uh, I really do recommend these boards are just beautiful and well-made and you are supporting a small business, which is nice. And um, this is what we're gonna be using going forward. So my thought with this is we will do, in the next video, we're gonna start talking about, ooh, look at that. I just, it's never a video <laughs> without me dropping everything. I knew I made this too full. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna talk about I know this looks complicated, it's not. But we are gonna talk about the relationships of color next, okay? I'll just give you a little sneak peek. A little sneak peek. And then I know a lot of you asked, you know, what colors go with what colors? And that's why I really wanted to do this. Now, it is going to be very detailed. And the reason why is because I just feel like people just, I mean, color theory is a very big subject and I can't believe I'm trying to tackle it, but I am. And there's always something to learn from it. And I'm by no means an expert, but I did major in art and I do paint. So I do understand color uh, as far as my limited knowledge of my own life and what I've done. But it is always a, anything, any kind of craft or hobby you have, even if it's, if it's jewelry making, if it's other things, even if it's just you want to redo your bathroom. I mean, understanding color uh, is something that I think everybody could learn and you can learn as much as you want or as little as you want. I'm trying to give you a medium 
topic because I think a lot of people just scratch the surface, but I, there's so much more to talk about. And when I'm doing the unboxings and I'm making jewelry, I want you to be able to understand when I say, oh, look, these are compliment, co complimentary colors or, you know, that way you get it. I mean, I know probably a lot of you have color knowledge already, but it never hurts to revisit. So, and this is very helpful. Um, I use it all the time and I already understand color, but there's no harm in having extra tools at your disposal to help you along. And also it's just pretty darn gorgeous to look at. This just makes me happy. I just could look at this all day. When I was putting this together, I was giggling like a little kid because I just really thought it was so pretty. And I mean, it's just, how can your eyes not like that? And we haven't even made a piece of jewelry. We will. But um, so yeah, over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna explore color theory. You had asked for it and um, I'm gonna give it to you. And then also my last little announcement is that I've decided to create a Facebook group for us. So a lot of you have questions and I thought it'd be a cool place maybe to share projects, especially if you work on one that I've taught you or you've done something with some things I've taught you, I'd love to see them. So I have a Facebook group for us called Marcy Creates underscore Design Studio. I believe that's it. So look for that. Um, and there's a few little questions you gotta answer so that I know you're a jewelry person and uh, you know, unfortunately the world we live in, there's people that huh, get on Facebook and do not nice things. So anyway, there's just a few little questions on there and it also helped me uh, figure out more videos for you. But I thought what a fun thing to do would be to have a little community of us on Marcy Creates and we can exchange ideas. You can ask me to do videos on certain things or explore topics more in depth. And then we can share, you can share your projects because I'd really love to see um, if you've done anything based on what I've taught you, I'd really love to see it. So um, be looking for that. Uh, that's out there now. Uh, I've never created a group before. So if I have to tweak some things, I will. Um, stay safe. Uh, stay cool wherever you are. It is so, so, so hot here. Enjoy the eye candy that is the color wheel. We're going to have fun with this. We're going to make some projects based on these beads. And um, I pulled a wide variety so we could just really play. And I can always pull more things in. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know this is not really making jewelry, but it is going to help you make jewelry. That makes sense. And I'm excited because it's, a, I mean, color is just something I love and always worth exploring. So I hope you enjoyed this. Try your Roy G. Biv with your beads. We will do a rainbow. In fact, if you want, get some pulled uh, because that's going to be our next project, which I think is going to be our tutorial Tuesday for this week. I was going to do the... Uh, dress it up buttons, but I think in the spirit of this series, the tutorial Tuesdays are going to correspond with what I teach you on Sunday so that one, the videos aren't super long and two, you can really dig in and learn and make some things. So do your Roy G. Biv, get your rainbows ready for Tuesday tutorial because that is what we're going to do. We're going to create um, probably a necklace and some earrings with the rainbow. All right. So again, be looking for the Facebook group. Please join. Um, it is a private group, so I have to let you in. If any of you are worried about security and all that, I, I totally get it. If not, just join me on Facebook, um, on YouTube. Which social media am I on today? <laughs> so confusing. Um, anyway, I just want to thank all of you so much for your kind comments, 
I hope this teaches you a lot of stuff. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And just take care of yourselves. And I will see you on the next video.